the, the wonderful towns from um, Riverhead, West Hampton, South Hampton, your wonderful community of Sag Harbor um, and going out to East Hampton. And we were blessed to have um, met Lou Mizell, who is a world-class art dealer and had uh, the same idea as I did. So we banded together. And if you notice on Montauk Highway, you'll see uh, sculptures in front of many buildings. And those sculptures are in front of Lou's buildings. And so he has a great relationship with the world-class sculptors. And I had the pleasure of going over to Sagaponic. If any of you haven't been over there, you should. Uh, it's called his uh, sculpture farm. And Hans is on eight acres filled with sculptures. And so he has agreed to lend us, hopefully for a year, his works of art in the different villages. And we uh, met uh, with the wonderful mayor uh, here in Sag Harbor, and we thought um, what would be wonderful if potentially we placed one of the sculptures in uh, a very significant place, I think along the wharf, is that correct? Is that the right way to say it, the wharf? That's what we're here to talk about tonight, so. Okay, um, so we wanted it someplace where people could come um, and take a picture even with the sculpture and uh, we'll do a little uh, contest once a month and pull the people's pictures um, with the sculpture and do a free dinner for two, uh, just to make some fun and promote it in uh, all of our media outlets so that, um, you know, it does ultimately not only add a great work of art, Hans is a world-class sculptor and hopefully some other sculptors will be joining us but for now, Hans has agreed to lend us his um, magnificent works. So that's really where I came tonight to meet all of you. And hopefully, you know, Dan's Papers is open to you and all the roles you fill, not just being trustees, but I know I'm sure each one of you has a special world that you walk in and that we want to know about. So it's been a great journey uh, coming to own the paper. And this was one of our concepts that Dan's Papers is sponsoring it. And um, it will be obviously free. And I would be delighted to answer any questions you might have. Okay. Well, we're still missing one of our trustees, which- um, I'm, I, I'm sending Jim some instructions thank right you, now. Wade. So, um, so right now, and I apologize, I am not good at running this. And, um, but I, for those of you who can see it, this is a picture that was retouched of what one might look like on the median in Long Wharf. That's where we are thinking about it. Um, and the, uh, so this would go up sort of as soon as possible, I'm assuming, Vicki, since you're- Yeah, you know, the whole point is, is that you all live here and you understand how dark the days can be in February, March, April. So we would like to get it up as quickly as possible. And Hans has selected the work that he felt would be right for that particular piece of property. Uh -huh. So, you know, as long as I get your approval, uh, we will flatbed it right over um, and there's no expense to the town. Um, this is um, a contribution and, um, you and know, you will uh, carry all the insurance for it of um, if it gets damaged, if kids climb on it, if graffiti, et cetera. So the insurance issue um, I've raised with Lou and he's speaking to Hans to double check on that. Um, so, you know, we um, are not worried about the sculptures being they're all steel. So there's no way that they're really impervious. That's why they're being chosen for the space to the weather conditions. And even graffiti got the bid. But, um, you know, we, uh, we have no problem with that. And if we, um, you had mentioned a year. I mean, I think it'd be, this would be great for, as you say, the dark days of, of winter, perhaps. Um, I'm not sure that it's you know, we have, we have so much going on in summer. I think it's just one more thing. And we also did just receive that island. Um, so I'm not certain about that. Uh, do we have other comments from the trustees at this point? Yes, trustee, Deputy Mayor Gardell. I'm just, you know, I'm, cons I'm just looking at this subjectively, I mean, if we start to use the long wharf to display art, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but 
you know, if we start to pick and choose who we're going to use and it's going to, I just think it's going to open up a whole nother can of worms. I like that. I like the long wharf just the way it is with open views and without having sculptures placed around in the area. That's just my personal opinion. Okay. I'd like to dwell on this for a while. I'm just, I love the idea of sculpture, but I, I'm with Tom that once we had one other request some time ago, pre before COVID for a sculptural piece in the village. And then we become the arbiters of what we can and cannot put up. So it puts, it might put us in a bind, but I'd like to think about this. We don't need to, to come to any consensus this evening, I presume. No, we do not. We, until we have the insurance -ish, um, answers, we couldn't really take a vote on it regardless. I do want, I mean, this is something that is sponsored by Dan's papers. It is not sponsored by Sag Harbor. We would be giving space, but it is not like Sag Harbor is putting on an art, art display. So that is one thing. The other thing is I noticed um, in some of the materials that you sent us, Vicki, uh, most of the sculptures are on, um, on, on office space or on private building space. So that is- Well, that's it, where, it's, where it started. So right. it's, it's not what we're doing. Since I bought the papers, I've made it my business to meet with the village mayors mm -hmm. and be able to um, expand that. That was just uh, the whole idea here, honestly, is to help bring business to the village uh, businesses and restaurants. So that was the reason to want to be near the village. Yeah. Oh, sure. No, we understand. I, it makes sense. I'm not, it's, um, but it is something that we have not done in the past. We try to, um, but it's, I think if you get the insurance information for us, we can, um, we can look at it again on February 24th. We just, um, it just is something that we haven't, we've, we've gone away from in the past because we don't want to be favored favorites to one artist or another. Um, so just something a little, little unsure, but um, if we can get a little bit more information and then we will, I apologize, this meeting has gone a little sideways, but um, we, will, we will revisit this on the 24th. And I know that's disappointing because you do want to get this up and running, but um, that is unfortunately the best we can do tonight, given everything that's going on. Well, I'm delighted to meet everyone and really make sure you know that we have a, an open door. And we are looking forward to working with you to promote all the wonderful things that you do and how we can be of help is we are here for you. Great. Thank you. And again, welcome to the community. We're happy. Thank to you. My pleasure. Nice meeting you all. Have a beautiful night and be Thanks. well. You will be in touch about. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have Tracy Mitchell from Bay Street Theater. Um, um, Tracy, you are on. She's hiding her face. Oh, I'm here. I'm just trying. I was trying to unmute. Hi, everybody. Um, greetings. Thank you all for having me. Um, I see that unfortunately it looks like only half the group is back on. Which is a shame. Tracy, you're, you're a little garbled. I don't know. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, now it's that, better. better. Okay, I'll lean into the mic. Um, I just was saying that I noticed that only um, a small portion of the people are back on, which is a shame, but... Yes, well... Um, um, so I'll try and be as um, expeditious as possible. I know it's been a long meeting. Um, I'm Tracy Mitchell, for any of you that don't know. I'm the executive director of the Bay Street Theater, where I've been for 14 years. Um, I'm a full-time uh, resident in the village, along with my husband, who is in private architecture practice, and my daughter, who is graduating in June from Pearson. Um, together, I work with uh, Scott Schwartz, who is our artistic director at Bay Street for now eight years. He's also a, um, a resident of Sag Harbor, part-time resident of Sag Harbor, and owns a home with his wife and daughter. 
And um, we are also working, um, I'm excited and, and really pleased that we're working back again with um, Steve Hamilton. <laughs> many back of again. <laughs> many of you know him as the um, found, one of the three founders of K Street, and he's a full-time resident um, of Sag Harbor. And he is working now as the um, Director of External Affairs with our group, Friends of Bay Street, which I'll describe in a minute. Um, I'd also like to um, introduce uh, the fourth person who I'm currently, we're currently working with, and that is Adam Potter, who was um, asking questions about the parking earlier tonight. Um, many of you may not know him. He is somebody that I've met, um, I met many years ago when he became a patron of Bay Street Theater. He and his uh, husband, Tom, who is an actor and a director and their two girls um, have a home in East Hampton and live there part-time. Um, so the way this came about uh, for um, with Adam to become the head and form uh, friends of Bay Street is that Adam Potter and I had spoken for many years about him joining the Bay Street Board of Trustees, um, which he thought he could do once he had uh, retired from his main business, which was the insurance business. And um, su subsequently to that, he came and said, um, I, when he finally retired, I asked him to join and he said, well, what is it that Bay Street's board and you really want to make happen? And I said, look, the biggest issue we have is that Bay Street does not have a permanent home. And um, the only way to do that is to either convince our current landlord that we should stay there um, or purchase property to do so. So he said, let's do it. And together we formed the Friends of Bay Street nonprofit organization with the sole purpose of designing, developing, fundraising, and building the new Bay Street Theater. So that's who Adam Potter is. Um, I think um, the other reason for that is just to mention that uh, Bay Street Theater, um, as a resident and a um, participant in it, um, I've always wanted it to remain in San Harbor. It's an economic, economic driver um, for the village. And um, we hope to have our permanent home on the new 7-Eleven site. So um, I wish I had drawings or something to show yet, but we are very much in the draft um, stages. And um, so I'd like Scott Schwartz, um, who is the real theater man here, um, to describe what we hope to have in the new building. Thanks, Tracy, and thanks to all of you for giving us this time tonight and, and to all of the trustees for letting us be a part of this meeting. Um, we're so excited about the possibilities that this new site offer for Bay Street and for what Bay Street can do for our whole community. As I think you know, we are the Bay Street Theater and Sag Harbor Center for the Arts, and one of the main parts of our mission is to serve the whole community as a place where people can come together and gather and create work and show work. So we're thrilled to have a chance to talk to you about what this new building might uh, encompass. I, I want to just tell you about the basic things we're talking about. You know, first of all, the new theater will be a purpose-built home that Bay Street will be, in which Bay Street will be able to create a state-of-the-art facility that integrates into the park and welcomes the community to both the park and the theater. We think it's actually marvelous to be right next to this new public park and to be able to interrelate with it and allow people to flow through and around our property to get to the park and vice versa. Um, the new space will allow for more community engagement and will provide space for new voices, new more local voices, 
new educational space and even more access to other non not-for-profit groups in our community. You know, we host many, many groups all around the year when, when our building can be open, of course. Uh, the, it will contain basically our same intimate 299 seat theater upgraded uh, to have contemporary technology and some tools that we can use that we don't currently have to create work, but it'll have a similar look and feel to what we have now. Um, it will have slightly more flexible seating, which is obviously very important, we've learned due to, due to COVID. Uh, it will have a more welcome and opening lobby space that might also potentially have a cafe um, that would be open to the park. So people could come from the park into the lobby, have a little something to eat, go back and be able to relax both indoors and outdoors when the weather allows. Um, and it would be open for all, a community space. You know, you wouldn't have to buy a ticket to, to be a part of that, that space. Uh, we're also talking about having a second flexible space in the theater, which would be primarily used for all of our education programs for both adults and kids. Uh, we do a lot of them and have actually expanded them during this time of COVID. Uh, it would also serve as a rehearsal space and would allow us to do smaller productions uh, of up to 99 seats, which may allow us to produce more year round. Um, it would be financially more viable for us to do smaller productions sometimes in the fall, winter and spring. So this multi-use space will be really, really valuable. And it would be a, a, a gathering place for the community as well, just a smaller, a smaller scale space and would be available for lectures and other community needs. Um, you know, it would have standard um, a box office and dressing rooms and our offices and green room, which is where the actors gather at intermission and between performances, you know, the mechanicals, um, which uh, would be um, interior in the building and not on the roof. We know that's very important. Um, so a lot of the same stuff we have now, but just in, you know, a state of the art facility that will be, we think much more um, open and welcoming to, to the whole community. So we're thrilled to, to chat with you all about it. If, if I could just pick up on what Scott said, um, theater is a destination. In, in its best form, it is a place for people to gather. And so it's, it's part and parcel of our mission at Bay Street to create a place where that is accessible to the entire village, where you're coming, to see a show or not. Um, it's, it's just to our advantage, both economically, but more intrinsically to our mission as a gathering place. You know, when um, Sybil Christopher and Emma Walton uh, and I founded Bay Street, we knew that in order for the theater to continue, in order for it to have the sustainability, it, it would need to own its own space. And here we are 30 years later, <laughs> and thanks to the great work of, of the board and Tracy and Scott, we're in a position now to actually do that. It's an opportunity that we really can't, um, we can't miss. And um, I urge everyone to, to really consider the, the, um, the importance of having Bay Street as not just the economic anchor, but the cultural anchor of Sag Harbor of the entire East End. It's, it's something I'm very passionate about, even after being not directly involved with Bay Street for the last 12 years. And I just, I, I just think it, this is the time and um, we look forward to working with all of you to making it right and making it right for the village. Thanks. Hey, Plum. I have a question. Why, why is your, um, I guess it's your, your financing group called the Base Friends of Bay Street Theater and the Sag Harbor Development Corporation? But what's the second part about? Um, I, can, I can address that one. Let me start the video. <laughs> um, that one re was really uh, not well thought out. I'll be the first to say that. Um, and we have now going are only going by friends of Bay Street. 
we've dropped the end Sag Harbor redevelopment um, because of the intention was to, to redevelop that 7-Eleven property. So um, it was a marketing you know, mistake. I'll be the first to admit it. And um, we are no longer going by end Sag Harbor redevelopment. So if you look at our, our letterhead, if you look at our, our footer and all of our signatures, it will just say um, Friends of Bay Street. So um, my apologies if that caused any any issues, um, but it was not meant to by any means. Uh, so you haven't, you're not interested in any other properties besides the 7-Eleven, what we call the 7-Eleven lot property? No, I mean, that's what, that's where we bought and, and that's where we're looking at putting the theater um, because yeah, that's what's, yeah. what's most exciting. You know, would do we still need housing for our artists? Absolutely. Are we always looking for the right space for housing for our artists? Absolutely. We spend $300,000 a year renting places for every summer. And it's, it's really a shame to kind of waste that money where we can own a place and build a place as opposed to renting space. And, and also, it's not easy renting places in, in Sag Harbor just for the summer. Now, so I think that is a yes, then, that you are interested in other potentially interesting. Sure. And and um, and we'd love for for more um, more donations. So if you'd like to donate, we'd love to <laughs> to take your money um, because we always need more donations to to make that a reality as well. But I will say that that I can tell you honestly, Bob, we we are not doing anything else right now. Our board of trustees has said that's it. We have the 7-Eleven property, build the theater. That's the priority. We can deal with housing down the road if and when we have the funds to do so. But that's where we are right now. And um, I'm sorry, Bob. You, you go on record, Adam, that that's the case? That, at, least that at, at least at this point? Right. I mean, we do want space for our artists, but right now, Friends of Bay Street is only focused on the the 7-Eleven of what we have. Um, let's let's get approval. Let's show you guys what the plans are. Let's show you how it's an open space, how it's inviting to the park, how we want to, you know, we want to make it not just 30 feet on our side, but 60 feet on our side. So it really opens up to the, the village to the space. We want to do all that and show that to you um, and come to you hopefully in the next 30 days and show you a nice plan that you guys will say, wait a second, this looks really great. Um, we're trying to do the right thing for the village um, and focus right now 100% on the um, on the property at 7-Eleven property. Trustee Karsh. Hey, good evening. Thank you so much for coming and joining us for the discussion. I have a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned that in, in, in addition to the 299C theater, which you would essentially be replicating Bay Street Theater on, on another location, you're also adding a 99 seat theater. Is that all going to fit on the 7-Eleven property? Uh, and, yes. And I asked I ask that, and would you plan on running concurrent shows the same day in both theaters? No. no. I think at this point, no. The, the way the unions are structured uh, that we work with in the theater is dependent upon the size of your auditorium. You have different pay scales. And we are very interested in potentially doing work that goes beyond um, the normal footprint of Memorial Day to Labor Day, which would you know, hopefully bring more people to town and give more opportunities for people in town to, to see things you know, in the fall, winter, and spring. We don't have a specific schedule in mind yet, but having a smaller theater gives us that option. We just simply can't afford to do that in a larger theater. Uh, in the fall, winter, and spring. But you couldn't imagine on um, any given evening that you might have a full production in the main theater while there's a music event or an acoustic event or a quartet event, something else going on in the other theater. And I asked those questions in the context of a full page ad that was in the back of our newspaper record this week asking the, in, asking the residents of this village to dispense with parking requirements. And I just find when I see the addition of 99 seats um, in, in conjunction with the request to remove parking restrictions, 
I must admit, um, my level of interest is raised. And I don't know if you, if, you, if someone wants to speak to that. Yeah, I, yeah. I think um, two things. I think there's there's two separate issues. One is it's it's not a separate 99 seat theater. It's a separate space that most of the time will be used for rehearsal and an education space. There'll be limited times where it will be used as a 99 seat space. We are not planning on doing a 99 seat production and a 299 seat production directly at the same time. Um, and the times it will be used as a 99 seat theater and, and Scott and Tracy, you correct me if I'm wrong, um, will be minimal compared to the times we're using it as rehearsal space in an education space. I have one final question as so many other people probably want to ask. What's the connection between Bay Street Theater and Friends of Bay Street Theater and Sac Harbor Redevelopment? Okay, so again, we're just Friends of Bay Street Theater. We're, we're not and Sac Harbor Redevelopment. And uh, I, I need to correct everybody when they say that because if we don't correct them, then it's gonna continue. So it is just Friends of Bay Street. So we decided to form a separate organization similar to, and again, I don't know all the background, but similar to, um, to, the, uh, to the, the, when the cinema was being developed, there was a separate organization that was formed to raise the money, to buy the property, to develop the property, to eventually turn it over to, to, SAG, to, um, to uh, Bay Street. We do not want to have two separate organizations going forward. Given what we're in today, the COVID situation, Bay Street Board needs to focus on running Bay Street. And we as a separate organization need to focus on how we're going to acquire money, how we're, go uh, how we're going to acquire pro the property, how we're going to design it, how we're going to get it approved, how we're going to build it. And once it's built, we're going to hand those keys over to Tracy and Scott and, and, and we're going to say, you know what, this has been great, we're done. I'm not in this for the long haul. I don't want to own a theater. That's not our goal as, as uh, friends of Bay Street. It's really develop the theater, build it, and, and hand it over to Bay Street. Just as a, uh, just as a point, the partnership, of course, was not formed um, to uh, raise money and to build the cinema, but it, but it, by all, in all purposes, we would operate in the same way that the partnership did vis-a-vis -vis the cinema. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Gardell. Yeah, well, I have everybody here from Bay Street. I just wanted to, Thank you, thank Bay Street for their Literature Live program, which is very helpful to the kids in school. And I just wanted to just ask you with the new theater, will those type of programs still continue? And will you still continue to do the Literature Live program and programs oh. like that? Most yes, certainly. Sir. If anything, this will allow us to do more. Um, and that's something we would be very excited about. And we agree, I mean, it's one of the programs we're most passionate about and most proud of at Bay Street. So thank you for, for raising that and absolutely it will continue. And, and I guess one other point to that is we're doing a lot of other things that are not in our space today within Sag Harbor. We're renting space for our education programs. And what this will allow us to do is move that rented space into our facility. I mean, I was something, um, when you answered um, Tristy Korish, uh, you would mention that the there would be a partition in between two, uh, say the 99 and the 299. I know these are union rule situations. I understand that. But um, is that the line that you're gonna do one building? And you may not know this yet, but I, as far as you know at this point, is it one structure or is it two as far as you know? We're, we're anticipating one structure. Because that lot is, what is it, 400 feet long or something like that? It's pretty, it's pretty long, right? It's uh, 300. Okay. Trustee LaRocca. Um, <clears throat> I've lived in this uh, village for 21 years. I learned early on something that I was always told about small town life. And that is that nothing much ever happens, but oh. what you hear makes up for it. So I want to ask you to help me on uh, a list I've been keeping of rumors uh, that we've been approached either formally or informally <clears throat> in Village Hall. Um, I'm not even sure where to start, but um, maybe we should start with, uh, you don't wanna share a design at this point, I understand, but what are the minimum dimensions of what you plan to do that will 
uh, allow you to do what you want to do. Um, the uh, rumors about size, the most frequent one is 35,000 square feet in three stories. Um, so I'll give you a chance now to put as much on the record as you can about uh, that particular set of rumors. I would call them the dimension rumors. Oh, yeah, so that's easy. Um, thank you for, for asking the question. Um, it's, it's easy for us to answer. Well, we don't have the formal presentation, which we are hopefully gonna have that in the next 30 days. Um, what we're trying to do is get everything on two floors and save the third floor as a much smaller floor only for um, mechanicals. So we recognize that there is a height restriction and we're trying to do everything we can to stay within that. Um, but we do, not, we do not envision a big glass box on the water or a big cement block uh, uh, box on the water. We envision an open airy space as much as we can uh, given the fact that we are a theater. Um, and Jim, you know a lot about theaters. Um, so we can only be as open as area as, as uh, you will hopefully see soon, but we're anticipating, we've told the architects two floors with any kind of mechanicals on the third floor. So again, it will minimize our height, uh, height restriction. So, is, can, can we answer at this point the 35,000 square foot question? It will not be, you know, our plan is not to build a 35,000 square foot theater, no. I can you tell you to, that one of the- we, we, Sorry, don't have, we don't have one yet, Jim. I mean, as soon as we do, we'll let you know. Um, we don't know exactly how big the building's going to be. We know it will be bigger than our current space. Um, but we're, we also know that we have restrictions on how big it is allowed to be under code. And we're trying to do everything we can to make sure it falls within the code as much as possible. Okay. I'm I, sorry, Tracy. I was just going to add that, you know, <laughs> the last thing we want to do is to... Um, create a space that Bay Street can't afford to maintain. This is extremely important to me as the executive director. You can't suddenly go, you know, building a 40,000, 35,000, whatever number you want, size building and expect to be able to maintain and run that um, from where we are now. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, it's been touched upon a little bit, but particularly with your ad, um, as, we, as we struggle with our plan for revising the code and the overlay and so forth, um, you clearly understand the code as it exists now and you have concerns about um, how it might change. Um, given the, the proposal that's out there and given the code that's there now, which is the, the, uh, the better um, code environment for you in terms of what you want to do? I don't know. If there, we haven't analyzed which one's better or worse for us. Um, we know that there'll be variances needed on either side of it. And our, our goal is to try to work right now within the current code and also the proposed code in building the most effective, efficient building, not just for us, but for the, for the residents as well and making sure it's open and airy. So there isn't one better or worse answer um, I think that we can, we can work within either um, and we're excited to do that. And, and as I've said, and I've been on a public record on this in the Sac Harbor Express and many of these calls, we wanna create that open space that people have full access to the park. And we're committed so in, to doing in that. In either case, um, you don't foresee being able to live within the code as it's written, either the new one or the old one, you would be seeking variances I presume significant variances in either either under the old or under the new code. No, I, I don't think they're significant and, and we have to wait and see, but we're trying to, to meet as much of the code as possible. And I think one of the, the, the most significant of course is going to be the parking. And we don't profess to, to have the answer to that. We also don't profess that we want to be, build a big parking garage on top of the, on the waterfront and that's not allowed in the, in the new code either. Um, but we want to limit the parking that is allowed on the waterfront. And I think that's good for everybody. Um, um, one very alert um, resident of the village asked why the new uh, entity, the Friends of, and I'll leave off the other part of it, uh, the Friends of is incorporated in the state of Delaware. Uh, you're a tax exempt organization 
Uh, most people go to Delaware for ease of corporate behaviors and tax, uh, uh, the tax structure in, in Delaware. Why have you chosen Delaware and not New York to incorporate? The, your tax exempt status is federal and we follow that in New York. So why, why Delaware? Um, that was the advice of our council and um, to file in Delaware and do a, uh, and, and basically also obtain uh, a permission to do business in New York, which we have done as well. So it was just on the advice of counsel, which we took. And that's you know, how we decided. Um, our corporate attorney suggested we file in Delaware. And didn't tell you a reason. Well, I mean, there's a lot of legal reasons and if you'd like, we can go. I'm, I'm sure nobody else would like to hear all the legal reasons and I can put you in touch with our lawyer but it was, um, there were a lot of legal reasons why he chose Delaware versus New York. And Tracy, is Bay Street incorporated here or in Delaware, the, the, the theater itself? You know, I actually don't know the answer to that question. Maybe Steve does. Yeah, yeah we're Steve, incorporated. Do you know? <laughs> we Steve. incorporated in New York. New York? <laughs> okay. memory. So you're, yeah. the, the theater is incorporated in New York. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. My next question is one from me. No one has brought this up to me, uh, but in uh, many not-for-profit situations where a not-for-profit takes a, a commercial property or even residential property and takes it into not-for-profit status, the cinema up the street being one of the most uh, recent, um, there is at least a question about whether you are, would be prepared to make uh, what they call pilot uh, uh, payments to the village, and that is payments in lieu of taxes. They're commonplace in a lot of uh, uh, this kind of activity. Um, we uh, foresee um, uh, the numbers were not as big as we thought, but as these commercial properties come into play, if they come into not-for-profit status, there's a tax consequence, a revenue consequence for the village. So would you entertain a pilot uh, payment um, to the village? Yes, um, we would entertain a lot of things. Um, we look at what historically has been done uh, within Sag Harbor and within, within Long Island. Um, I don't know if the cinema has done it. Um, and if you would ask that of the cinema um, or any of the other uh, places that have done it as well. Um, but we would, of course, we would entertain that um, and look at how, what the most effective way of doing that is. Okay, thank you for that. And then finally, and this is uh, me in my hat as the Department of Broken Records, uh, I've asked you to consider an alternative location. And that is the south side of the street, across the street from the 7-Eleven building, which is currently in the ownership of National Grid and uh, uh, some uh, part of the Scavoni family. If that price, if that, uh, those two properties could be combined and assembled, um, and I've raised the possibility that we could pursue that as a no cost acquisition. Uh, could we uh, persuade you to consider that as the alternate location uh, and thereby leaving the waterfront even more open uh, under that scheme? I, you know, I think, we're, I think we're too far down the road at this point, Jim. Um, well, we appreciate your desire to make a, a larger park. Um, we are also focused on building the theater and we've raised significant funds um, from donors, letting them know where that theater is going to be. Um, and we wouldn't want to upset that and, and the monies that we've been able to raise. So right now we are focused on making sure that we are moving forward with the planning. And again, we'll share that with you in the next 30 days to show how open an area it is to the park. Um, but at this point, we are, we, are, we are committed to moving forward with the, the lot that we purchased last year in, in, in September. I'm sorry, in, uh, in July, we made the offer. Um, so I think we're, we're committed to moving forward. We've done a lot of, we spent a lot of money and a lot of development and a lot of time in, in looking at this new theater. So um, while we appreciate that, we're willing to work with the village and create an open spot and, and an inviting spot to make sure they have access to the park. Um, we think it's maybe not in the best resources of the, the village to, to, um, to do that. And, and also in our best interest, it probably isn't to move it across the street as well. So um, the answer is no, even if it was free. But you, you and I have had this conversation. But right. Just I mean, have it on the record. Now, even if we could get it for you for nothing, 
So you get a crush for nothing, but we've still paid $14 million for the yeah. lot. So if you're going to. Well, I probably have an idea for that too, but we won't, we won't have to do all of that. Um, and finally. You have a lot of good ideas, Jim. <laughs> and finally, um, of the rumors that I guess I want to take this opportunity to talk about, um, we've heard very specifically about the properties going up uh, Bridge Street and across Rose Street. Uh, and uh, to the extent that um, uh, they may be of interest. I know uh, there was talk about uh, housing locations for the theater. Um, we've been told uh, by one uh, uh, tenant up in there that they've been told they have to be out of one of those buildings uh, because it has been sold or is in contract. So can you bring us up to date, whether it's outside of the, the, the theater uh, uh, questions itself, um, of any activity any of you are involved in, in those properties um, that will bear on the future development of um, the waterfront? Sure, absolutely. So, so one of the things that I've looked at personally is we are displacing a number of tenants in the 7-Eleven building. Um, and I'm, I'm looking at, and, and nothing has been purchased. Um, there's a lot of rumor and speculation um, nothing has been purchased, and I will attest to that, um, that uh, we need to find spaces or we need to help these 15,000 square feet of tenants find spaces within Sag Harbor. And that's what one of the things that Friends of Bay Street has been focused on is how do we locate spaces for those tenants? And we are doing everything in our power to find the right space for those people. So as space comes available, <laughs> Um, we will do our best to ensure that we're able to get those pe get people accommodated. We don't want to kick anybody out, and we've committed to our tenants not to do so as to, to the best of our ability. Okay, just to polish that a little bit, you say nothing's been purchased. Is anything in contract? There may be things in contract um, that I can't comment on one way or the other, um, but I think that one of the things, again, we're focused on is getting the, the reason if, if anything will be purchased, it will be to create space for those tenants in, um, in the 7-Eleven building. Okay, thank you for uh, undergoing a cross-examination. <laughs> Treat it as friendly. <laughs> thank you. Yep. Do you have any other questions from the Board of Trustees? Not for now. Okay. I look forward to seeing the next 30 days and what we have ahead of us. I thank you um, all for coming. I appreciate it. And um, we will- Mayor, may I add one last comment? Yep. And that is to say that I thank you all for asking us to come. I, it really feels great to dispel a lot of the rumors. Um, I know everyone's waiting to see a plan. Um, and I would just say as a village resident, um, I'm thrilled that Bay Street was able to get this property versus um, another developer. Um, and because of what went on to what will be the West of us, um, whether you like it or don't, um, I, I'm so grateful that we will have the opportunity to have this as a community accessible space with at full access to the park. And um, I think it'll be um, something we can all be proud of. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Trustees. Yep, thank thank you. you so much. Thanks, thank Tracy. You thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bay Street. Uh, thank you very much. We really appreciate you coming in and sharing this time with us. More to come. <laughs> yep. Good. We look forward to it. All right, I am giving everyone fair warning. I did just get a random message saying, I am now the host, I don't know why. Um, so if we all go away again, I don't really know what to tell you. We'll try to call them one more time. So let's, um, we do have some time for public comments. We have, it is now 8.15, 8.20. Um, Technically, we have 15 minutes for public comments. I don't even know that as host, I will be able to see if anybody has public comments. These can be about anything you've heard so far, about anything else you'd like to share. The one thing I would ask it not be about is paid parking because we will have that discussion in just a few minutes. Um, so I 
I'm not seeing any hands up or any up. Oh, Adam? Sorry, I have one quick question. Um, will the TDM be available on the website? So we yes, can it will be. I have no idea why it isn't. I thought it was put up there a few days ago. I apologize for that, but we will have that up. We have a meeting early tomorrow morning. We'll have that up as soon as we um, as soon as we can tomorrow morning. Great, thank you, Mayor. Um, again, from what I'm seeing, I'm getting nothing. Though I did just hear a ding. Yeah, this is nuts. Okay. Um, in that case, let's move on to department and committee reports. And if um, we can keep this as quick as humanly possible, that would be wonderful because we still do have an awful lot of meeting to get through. So I will start um, the police department. There were 598 calls for service, which is a 13% increase over 2020. Um, that is due to probably more people here as well as the weather. So um, that is that. Um, in addition, police reform continues. There was a meeting tonight with the committee. At this, um, we will have a draft of our police reform and reinvention re review. Don't try to say that really fast. Um, at our next board meeting. So in our, on our March board meeting, we will have a draft to present to the board of trustees and to the public of the police reform. And that is um, going very well. Chief McGuire and his um, group have done a great job of really organizing that. If you have other comments, anyone that they want to add to police reform, you can email me directly and I will get it on. Or you can email info at sagharbormy.gov. And that is the end of the police report. The parks report, I am delighted to tell you that Steinbeck Park with its beautiful new website designed by Trustee Korish and being in partnership with the Sag Harbor Partnership has already raised $150,000 for the park. We have sold the beach. Who knew sand costs so much? <laughs> but we, um, we have sold a number of things. We've sold some pieces of grass. We've sold, that doesn't sound right, but lots of grass. Um, and we've sold other things. So please go on. If you haven't seen the website, go to the Sag Harbor website. You can click through to there by clicking on the John Steinbeck portion of our village website. Uh, Aiden, do you know the other way? Uh, you can also get there through the partnership to So going. Yeah, to the easiest Harbor way is to, easiest way is to go through the village website and there's a nice blue button there with the park logo on it right in the middle. So um, please go visit it, buy a bench, buy a tree, buy some pieces of grass, and um, we'll keep going. We hope to be able to start doing some things this spring, and we really, we are, with a little bit of luck, going to do a groundbreaking in the fall to build our beautiful park. And that is the end of my reports. Deputy Mayor Gardella. Thank you, Mayor Mulcahy. Uh, for the month of February, 2021, the volunteer fire department for Sag Harbor had over 980 man hours for the month. Uh, they had a structure fire call, a motor vehicle accident, which was a vehicle versus a pedestrian, um, and one brush fire. They also had 31 other reported alarms that they responded to. Um, the fire department continues training covering several topics such as hazmat and pesh and bloodborne pathogens. Um, for the first time they did that via Zoom. Uh, they've also done training in the East Hampton Training Center because the Suffolk County Fire Academy has been closed due to COVID-19. Uh, we also had a ice rescue drill in Pine Neck this past week uh, that was very successful. Um, so that's the report for the fire department. Um, as far as the ambulance goes for the month of uh, Let's see, we had uh, 46 emergency calls, uh, four work nights, two meetings, four training sessions, one drill for 720 hours. Um, we've had uh, quite a few uh, COVID calls this, this past month uh, that's been slowly winding down. So I hope that that's a good sign. And again, the aeroclave system uh, has been a godsend. Um, I've used it after, after uh, transporting a COVID patient and uh, 
we usually do it every time and we do it before each uh, a squad comes on or before each uh, shift. So uh, that is, as I said before, none of our members have uh, contacted COVID-19 through this whole pandemic so far through ambulance contacts. They might've gotten it uh, somewhere else uh, at work or something, but not through the ambulance. So um, we've been doing the proper precautions wearing the N95 masks, gloves, and uh, also full body covering if necessary. Uh, we also had a blood drive this past Friday. If you could unmute Missy Hessler, I'd like her just to speak about that very quick. Um, and my report after that is over. So if you could just give her a minute to speak. Missy, you can unmute yourself. Hey, how are you? Thank you. Um, a blood drive that we had on Friday, February 5th was a huge success. Um, we collected 97 whole blood. Uh, 13 Alex is where they separate the blood and the platelets. They put the blood back in the patient, which counts as two um, donations. So we have a total of 123 donations, which saves over 369 lives. Our next blood drive is going to be June 11th, and I have to discuss it with the fire department. They want us to do it from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. to get maybe 150 to 200 pints instead. So it was great social distancing. They did their own food. We didn't have to worry about that. And the fire department led, took the trucks out for us. It was, it was great. A um, lot of people, they had to, they turned away 27 people from the door that tried to show up just to donate because they couldn't take them. It wasn't enough. And they had 21 deferrals. So it was a huge success. And thank you all who came and just keep it on your calendar for January, I mean, June 11th. And they also are gonna do the antibodies test again for every donor that donates next time as well. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, Trustee Plum. Uh, building and code enforcement. As you know, we have been uh, without a building inspector for some time, although we have very promising prospects um, for a permanent inspector, so that's great. Um, the uh, monthly report, January, the building department took in $32,700. And um, that's really all I have. And the code, enf code enforcement um, performed 15 um, routine inspections, issued nine issues uh, notices of violation, and issued eight permits. And uh, we, we do expect the billing department to be up and running within the next three weeks, month, but, but in a much better way than it has been. And NPV is gonna be doing our initial plan reviews based on the checklist we developed. So that's gonna be put us way ahead of the game. That's it, thank you. We do have a part-time building inspector who is starting, um, a village employee who is starting on uh, doing inspections here on Thursday. He actually started today. He's in training for two days and we'll start doing inspections here Thursday. Um, also, in regards to code enforcement, remember that after snow, you are to shovel your sidewalks. Code enforcement is out and ticketing. So please um, get those sidewalks shoveled. Can I get uh, Trustee Korsh, please? Thank you, Mayor Mulcahy. Uh, I'm gonna start with grants and with a big shout out and a thank you to Mary Ann Eddy, who is responsible for two grant applications that are going through at the moment. Uh, the first is she's working on a GIPH, that's through the Governor's Consolidated Funding Application, the CFA process, and that is the Green Innovation Grant Program, and that supports projects across New York State that utilize unique stormwater infrastructure design and to create cutting-edge green technologies. And GIGP-funded projects are found from Buffalo to the east end of Long Island and range from, range from rain gardens to stream daylighting projects. Um, the fund provides up to $17 million in grants on a competitive basis. In addition, Marianne is also looking at an East Hampton CPF grant that's due fairly soon. It'll be for a master plan for watersheds. And we're looking from, and the fund funds the plan, which is really interesting. Normally funds tend not to like to fund plans. They prefer to, to fund actual projects. But in this case, we can look at the watersheds from Cor Maria, east all the way to little northwest 
Creek. And with this, she's working on with Nelson Pope and Voorhees to get this together. And a major part of Sag Harbor's waterfront is in the town of East Hampton, lies within the residential areas um, east of Division Street. Um, we're looking at this funding uh, to, to make this study uh, of this watershed, which contributes stormwater and groundwater outflow to the Sag Harbor Bay and Little Northwest Creek and poses challenges in terms of stormwater management, sanitary system function, habitat degradation and erosion. So they're two very worthy grant applications and grants are you know, a, little, a, a, a little tighter to get at the moment considering budget situations. But I really like to thank Mary Ann Eddy for taking the lead on these and, uh, and pursuing them. Moving on quickly to sewage treatment plant uh, for the month of January, year 2021, total gallons received 1.745 million. Total gallons of sludge removed are 22,500 gallons. DMO reports are forwarded on 2-8-21 and Suffolk County DHS inspection date is 2-18-21. So in about two weeks or next week. Um, New York State DEC inspection data, as always, is open. We had no complaints. Uh, wastewater treatment plant is running well under all permitted levels. Now operating on three basins only because the influent flows have decreased um, due to the winter season. Everything is operating in good order. There are no problems at this time. And the flow decrease from December to January was approximately 128,000 gallons. And that concludes my report tonight. Thank you very much. Trustee LaRocca, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'll be very quick with the court report. Um, they are moving toward increased activity as the COVID uh, uh, rules and regs allow, uh, but it's still a slow process. <clears throat> we have the final figures on the year on the gross revenues, not on the uh, net revenues. And the differential is at almost exactly $300,000 below a year ago. Um, from 682.7 down to 383.3. So it's, uh, it's a concerning matter, as Tim has mentioned, and we continue to look at in terms of the budget. Um, the actual uh, numbers, um, uh, people should not believe because things are slow, they you know, shouldn't get their tickets paid up and, and that sort of thing, because as time goes on, it's, they don't go away. Uh, so we would encourage that. In terms of public works, uh, we came through our, a second uh, mercifully quick snowstorm at uh, the beginning of the week. Um, very pretty um, and with a nice freeze following to, to lock it in view for a while. Uh, but uh, in terms of work by our department, uh, they were out uh, and way ahead of uh, all the needs as they arose. Uh, they did have trouble with the, uh, uh, one of the vehicles we use. It's a 1995 vehicle. Um, and D, D and I are looking at uh, a new smaller payloader uh, that uh, uh, we would uh, come to the mayor with uh, very shortly uh, and possible uh, purchase of um, uh, a replacement payloader uh, and probably keep the old one as a backup uh, because its uh, trade in value is almost negligible. Uh, and uh, it'd be nice to get our vehicle fleet into the 20th century. <laughs> That's one piece of equipment. Uh, that uh, needs replacement. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> for what it's worth, the storm of the beginning of the week was seven inches, uh, and a lot of it was wet and heavy. That makes the burden higher, uh, but the um, work has all been done. Um, with very light tree trimming in recent weeks because of the weather conditions, and working uh, the schedule on our um, spot sidewalk repairs will continue as the weather allows. And that is my report. Thank you very much. Can I get a motion to accept the department reports, please? Motion. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, we are now going to go back to local law introductions. So, um, Aiden, do you want to do parking quickly? I, yes, Mayor, thank you. I will run through um, the updated proposal for paid parking. Uh, I'd like to start if anybody was uh, reading the last edition of Sag Harbor Express, there was a contradiction between news story on the front page and the viewpoint section uh, later in the edition. And so to clear up any confusion, I'm gonna go through 
what the current proposal is. This is a very dynamic situation. Uh, we've had a lot of feedback as we have had on other issues we discussed this evening. And in the process of listening and responding, um, we have come to a new proposal, um, which I will now outline for you. Um, currently, we are proposing that paid parking will be on Long Wharf only. So paid parking will not, is not being proposed for Main Street, just on Long Wharf. And Long Wharf represents about 10% of the available downtown parking. That's a big change and, worth, and noteworthy. Other things stay the same. Parking will still be paid parking from Memorial Day to Columbus Day. It will still be, still be from 10 a.m. to midnight. The first hour will still be free, but all subsequent hours will be charged at a rate of $4 only. No increase, no changes. First hour free, every subsequent hour will be charged at $4. In addition, any parking session that's initiated before 6 p.m., um, that will be from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. is three hour session. Any parking um, session initiated after 6 p.m. will be a five hour session. That hasn't changed. Um, in addition, payment will be made, will be app-based as we discussed in our previous meetings um, by um, operated by the firm Parkmobile or by dialing an 800 number. For anybody who doesn't have a phone, doesn't have a smartphone or any means of communication, a telephone for this purpose will be available at the Harper Masters office on the wharf. So you can operate this paid parking without having any device whatsoever. You can go to the Harbor Master's office. There'll be a telephone there where you can interact with Paymobile and initiate uh, your parking session. Um, we're also proposing that we'll add some free 30 minute spots exactly like we have on Main Street. These spots will be to the east side of the wharf as you go in in front of the theater so that the stores and, and the businesses on Long Wharf will not be at a disadvantage to the businesses on Main Street there will be free parking available there, 30 minute parking. The exact number has yet to be determined, but there will be free parking there. Um, we also intend, there was some feedback on social media. There was concern about cell phone service and how this would operate. We are still on track to having cell phone service in the village upgraded through the installation of antennas in the cupola of the municipal building. And, Everything that tells me right now that that is still on track to be in place in time for the summer season. Finally, and this is really important, funds from this, from, from this enterprise will be ring fenced for sidewalk repair, installation, and also for much needed transportation infrastructure items, such as street flood water mitigation and the creation of cycling lanes. Um, these are all important. I did find it a little ironic that the, um, the piece in Sag Harbor Express was illustrated with a photograph showing two, showing two teenagers riding their bikes in the commercial district of Main Street along the pavement, which we all know is not allowed. But we would hope that through this process, we could start a virtuous cycle of having um, sustainable, repeatable fund source that we could use to develop parking and other areas, develop bicycle lanes and other infrastructure that would, I think would help everybody in the village. Thank you, Mary. Thank you very much. Um, can I get a motion to bring this to this? Oh, this is an introduction, Denise. What? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yep. Motion to um, motion. schedule the public hearing. Yep. I'll make the motion. Thank you. I'll second. All in favor. Good. So, Mr. Quick or... Question yeah. for Denise. Um, sure. The the clock running on the public. Um, uh, into the introduction tonight, do we need to do the 30 days from now? Because it's essentially a new pr new proposal uh, or uh, uh, from the earlier. The, the um, no, it's the public hearing will be on the 24th um, because we don't need the 30 days for this amendment. We need that for zoning amendments. And this is in vehicle and traffic law. So the public um, has between now and the 24th, but it would be <clears throat> your intent that the, the board act on this plan on the 24th? Uh, no, it's just, it's scheduled for public input, you know, public hearing on the 24th and the board um, can adopt their after hearing resolution um, at that meeting or at a meeting after that date, depending on uh, the comments they receive and 
what the trustees decide to do. Okay. So it could be it could be adopted as soon as the twenty fourth. Correct. Okay. Um, just a word in in, so in defense of the young man who wrote that viewpoint piece. At the time it was typeset, the old proposal was still on the table, and that's why you see a contradiction. I understand. It's been a very dynamic. He's a very good fellow. I can tell you that. A big pardon. He's a very good fellow. That young man oh, yeah. who wrote that piece. He is indeed. I have a lot of admiration for him. Okay. Can I? We have motions. Can uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Bob. Thank yeah. you. Against? Jim. On the twenty fourth. Yes. Okay. Uh, local law amending chapter 300 zoning to update the lighting regulations to ensure continued improved compliance with dark sky recommendations. This is yes, the, uh, this, uh, this is the proposed local law that we discussed at the last meeting. And we are, this is being scheduled for public hearing on March 9th. Thank you. Can I get a motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We got Tom, we got Bob. Yes. Thank you. We got everyone there. Uh, local law amending Chapter 300 zoning proposed addition to Chapter 300 zoning Article 15 <laughs> land clearing regulations. Yes. Uh, this is, as the board may recall, I went over a few. Uh, modifications in the village code that were requested by the planning board um, seeking clarification on a few issues. One of them um, is clearing and the fact that um, it, the location in the code where it states that you require a building permit for clearing is, is somewhat buried. Um, it's in a section that um, you wouldn't necessarily look. So we wanted to um, modify the code to clarify that and make it clear uh, both for um, residents and also you know, their attorneys as well. Uh, so that is that proposal is being scheduled for public hearing on March 9th. Oh, I'll make second. the motion. Thank you. I get a second. second. Thank you, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, Jim. Did I, you, I'm sorry. You're, you're good. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, a local law authorizing the issuance of special exception use permits for outdoor dining, accessory to restaurants, and retail food stores on a permanent year-round basis. Trustee Laraca has worked very hard on this with the local restaurants. Do you want to say anything about it? Just um, that I think we've solved a lot of problems along the way. And uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of very good work with Denise and uh, uh, Kathy over the uh, last couple of days. So the, uh, the draft you have tonight reflects uh, the work of all of the last week. So thank you for, for making this deadline. And uh, some of the questions that still come out of the temporary stuff, the emergency COVID stuff, we'll be addressing as, as we go forward. But this sets in motion the, um, uh, the, new, the new design that this be part of a village life on a continuing basis. So Denise, this is being introduced for hearing on March 9th. Thank you. March 9th as Can well. Can I get a motion, please? I'll make the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. A local law for providing for the amendment of Village Code Chapter 186, Parks and Recreation, to regulate conduct on all public beaches and public parks. This is um, something that Trustee LaRocca and Chief McGuire worked on. I've worked a little bit on recently um, to make sure that you know, we, we behave in our public parks and we know where um, people are allowed, where dogs are allowed, and where uh, if we have some horses around, where horses are allowed. But um, we're just trying to find, you know, to codify it a little bit better. So this will have a public hearing on March 9th as well. That's going to be a busy meeting. I, um, but I'd like to propose a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, the definition of structure in Chapter 300 zoning to clarify commercial property access drive areas constitute coverage and should not be excluded when calculating percentage of lot coverage. Denise, you have anything to say beyond that? Uh, no, that pretty much says it. Again, this is the my another minor code clarification um, requested by the planning board. Uh, to make it clear that uh, access driveways and parking areas are not excluded for coverage in commercial properties. Okay. Also okay. set for public hearing on the 9th. Okay. Can I get a hear uh, motion? Move. Thank you. Second. All in favor? <clears throat> Aye. Aye. Bob, do you know that you're muted? Okay. Yeah, I just realized it. Did you have something you wanted to add? Well, to I just that? wanted to clarify that 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 the um, the coverage is not excluded when calculating the percentage of coverage. That's all. Yeah. But it's, it, I read it again. It's fine. Should not be. Yeah. yeah. All right. Number seven: A local law to modify Chapter Three Hundred zoning to expand the requirement for transitional yards between commercial and adjoining residential uses to apply in residential zones in addition to commercial zones. Same thing, yes. it was a planning request, I believe. Planning board request as well, uh, appears to be a loophole in the code that was inadvertent and um, will require transitional yards to buffer residential properties that abut pre-existing non-conforming commercial uses in residential zones where they probably need the most protection of all. Um, so again, uh, scheduled for public hearing on March 9th. Great. Motion? Motion. Thank you. Second. Favor? Aye. Aye. Are we walking on a last minute introduction? Oh, yes. Um, we uh, have drafted a proposed local law to extend the existing moratorium that's in place uh, with regard to um, special permits and uh, site plan applications in the waterfront district that was outlined um, by Nelson Pope and Voorhees um, on, on the map that they provided back in September. The uh, existing moratorium uh, will expire on March 1st. The proposal is to extend it um, for an additional six months. Uh, I don't believe that Six months will be required, but um, like Mr. Down stated earlier, uh, it probably does make sense to propose something longer than you might need than shorter. Um, but that that's obviously up to the board and um, this will be scheduled for public hearing on March 9th as well. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Just, I would just second the idea that <clears throat> once, once, once we're going to push it out in time, um, I'm not sure we need six months, but um, try to do something that is something we'll only do once. Yep. So I would agree. I agree. Okay. Can I get I'll a make, motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Can get a second. Second. Thank you. What was the, is there a time, a specific time? So six months. Uh, six months. months. Six months. Holy. But we may not, we, we don't have to use all those months. It's just to have it in case. All right. Okay. Right. For example, you know, with the wetlands law, we extended it for six months, but we only used two of those months. So um, that's my hope that we'll follow the same timeline uh, if all goes well during your public hearing process. Right. I just hope we can keep the fire on everybody. No, we do need well, to yeah. do that. And we can have... because we will run out of money, so we need to keep it going. Yeah. yeah. Just Deputy Mayor. I just want to say when this process started, I warned everybody about this that this was going to take longer than six months. I told them. So, so all I'm going to say is I'll I'll vote for this, you know, but I told you so. Thank you. So noted. So noted. You all know, in favor. The fact. Yeah. The matter is a lot of these public comments have come in in the last like week. They had they had all this time. Whatever. I'm in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, approval of, uh, we did the approval of minutes, right? Uh, Beth, I'm now completely. So we're on to correspondence, correct? Sorry. Are we on, we're just on the correspondence. We've correct. done all the actions. Okay. Uh, resolution February 2021 to set the date and time for annual village elections on June 15th between the hours of 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. at the fire headquarters with the offices to be filled in terms thereof. Um, this was something that Trustee Korsh brought up. It is a great point. We have these village elections that go from noon to nine, which is a very strange set of times. The one thing to be a little concerned about by extending this is finding poll workers as well as it will, it will have additional costs. So um, it is, you know, we can do it, um, but it does have a, some ramifications. So I don't know if we want to discuss that or if we think that this is something that we should do. I think we should do it. I mean, we just got to work it out. I mean, it's a small price to pay or whatever we have to pay for democracy, for extended, so people have the chance to vote. Yeah, Go to me, it. opening a poll at noon never made any sense. People, you know, it's right in the middle of the work day. We have residents here who vote here, but may not be able to stay all day Tuesday to vote. Um, I think it's a necessary thing to do. It's a price we have to pay for democracy. I agree with Tom. Then can I get a motion, please? I'll make the motion. And I'll, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Authorizing the submission of an application for the Green Initiative Grant Program and acknowledging the action as a type two under CEQA. Uh, this is the grant that Aiden was speaking about earlier, and I want to send a personal thank you out to all the members of the Breakwater Yacht Club, the Sag Harbor Yacht Club, and a number of other people on the waterfront and down on Bay Street who've written letters in support of the village to get this grant. So thank you very much. I sent out a request on Friday, and by Monday, my inbox was filled. So I really appreciate that. Can I get a motion, please? Motion. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sag Harbor Fire Department requests with their fingers crossed authorizations to use ha Havens Beach August 3rd to August 7th for the annual carnival and their department picnic on Sunday, August 22nd. I'll make the motion. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. With fingers crossed. The Yardley requests that John Noble be taken off probation while working at the Sag Harbor Wastewater Treatment Plant. I'll make that motion. Um, the new gentleman has stepped in and we're hoping for great things there. So uh, I wish him all the best. Um, great new employee. So as I say, I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> of Derek Galen, Anthony Hagen, John Stauffer, Howard Costa, and Kelly Kramer, their 221-year application for commercial slip mooring usage. I'll move it. Thank you. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The Sag Harbor Community Rowing requests authorization to use Cove Park for the Community Rowing Club from April 15th to November 15th and requests a five-year lease with the lease to come. I need to recuse myself on this, but Denise can answer any questions for you. Absolutely, yes. Um, the rowing club would like to, as the mayor said, extend um, their lease for this season and will provide us with a draft of a lease um, for a five-year term that I will review and edit as needed um, and uh, obviously provide the board with um, that draft and incorporate any comments that you have to it. Is this uh, five-year a new device or was it previously just year to year? Yes. Okay, and uh, is there any compensation involved? I don't, I, I don't have the terms to be honest with you. Um, so I apologize. Well, next time I, we I don't know. Just, just have that for us. Sure. <clears throat> I'll move they it. They asked for this last year too. I mean, it makes sense if we're gonna- That's true. Here. Yeah, we did hear, we did hear this request last year as well. 
I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> All right. The Michael Geyer requests permission to be listed and placed on the ballot as an eligible candidate for the position of second assistant chief in the April 21 Sag Harbor Fire Department elections. I'll make the motion. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Authorization to sign the 2021-2022 contract agreement for police dispatching services within the with the village of East Hampton for this year, June 2021 to May 2022, in the amount of $63,125. I'll make a motion. Thank Second. You. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Authorization to sign the stop DWI enforcement contract with the County of Suffolk, January 1, 2021 through December 31, 2021, depending the village attorney review. I move it. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Temple Adas Israel requests the authorization for the use of Haven speech for celebratory Jewish holiday of Purim on February 28th from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. I'll make the motion. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Authorization to sign the agreement with Harbor Tours to operate sightseeing cruises on the American Beauty from Long Wharf for the 2021 voting season. Move it. Thank Second. You. All in favor? Aye. Uh, approve the 2020 service listing for the Sag Harbor Fire Department LOSAP. I'll make the motion. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Uh, approve the 2020 service listing for the Sag Harbor Volunteer Ambulance Corps LOSAP. Motion. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Michael McCree requests permission to run for the position of second assistant chief in the April 2021 Sag Harbor Fire Department elections. I'll make the motion and as, as you can see, we have competition for the 32 position in the fire department. So there will be a contested election. I'll make the motion. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> February 2021, retain the services of F. Michael Hemmer for professional surveying services for the Germain Avenue Road and Drainage Improvement Project. This is something that we have been wanting to do for a while, and it will be the first step in trying to uh, do something up there and tame it a little bit and make it a little safer. So. How, do we know how much this is costing us? We do. We have surveying services are $15,100. What? Okay. Can I get a motion? Move it. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And a return of tax warrant and report of unpaid taxes. I don't even know what that means, Beth. That that's um, well. There's your copy in your um, in your in your meeting packet, which is the actual the. Um, the tax warrant that we trans that we produce, which indicates the amount of the taxes and the levies on the tax bills for unpaid sewer rent and false alarm charges. For example, the budget was seven million eight hundred eighty nine thousand one hundred fifty three dollars and ninety cents in taxes. Right now, our unpaid taxes are, or as of Friday, I should say, we're at two hundred fifty five thousand two fifty three point seventy two. Thank you. Can I get a motion? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. <clears throat> and if I can get a motion to approve the payments presented in more 40, 41, 42, 43, and 44, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and now I would like to give everyone one last chance for public comments. Um, before we adjourn the meeting, if there is anybody, I think we're down to one page, so I can probably see everybody. <laughs> Just, can I make a comment, a quick comment? I forgot to put in my report that the fire department uh, put a FEMA grant in for a new fire engine to replace 711 through the 
uh, gentlemen that we hired, the grant guys. So right. the process has been completed and it's been applied. So we're just waiting to hear. That's great news, Tom. Thank you. Chief O'Brien, do you want to unmute and say something? Or was my cursor? Am I unmuted? No, uh, uh, Tommy just said what uh, I was going to bring up. So it was a uh, very successful, I think. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I think the new grant writers really worked out. They seem to know the ins and outs of this particular grant. Um, so we'll see how it happens. That's Thank wonderful. you. When will this be announced? How, uh... um, so there's, I guess there's a couple stages of it. We should know by the end of March, if we made it through stage one, they first put you through a computer program to see if you score high enough to move on to like the essay part where they judge you a little more under more scrutiny. Gotcha. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much for taking that on. I really, really appreciate it. It's great. Yeah, no, no problem. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. All right. If there's nothing else, I think I could take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> He was looking at me like, oh, no, we want to stay. Yeah. One more hour, please. All in favor. Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night, Thank everyone. you. Good night. Have a good night. Everybody. You too. Bye-bye. Peace. Peace. Love. <laughs>